Hello folks! In this video I'm going to continue working on Flappy Bird in Pygame. So last time I got as far as adding in these physics so the bird can flap up the way and then gravity pulls it down until eventually it hits the ground and game's over. What I want to work on in this video is adding in pipes. So I'm going to do that in pretty much the same way as I did the bird class. So I will use sprites for that as well. So I'll come down here just underneath the bird class and I'll create a new one for pipe. So this is going to be class pipe and then in brackets here, I type in pygame.sprite.sprite. .sprite. And after that, I can begin my initialization. So I say define my init function. This is going to take the arguments of x and y for the coordinates. And then as always, I type out that line for inheriting sprite functions from the sprite class. So pygame.sprite.sprite. .sprite. And I just call the init function. So with that done, the next two things are to load in the image and create a rectangle from that image. So first of all, I say self.image equals pygame.image.load, and then I can load the image for my pipe. So with that done, I can create a rectangle from it, which is going to be self.image.get underscore rect. So it just takes that image and it creates a rectangle boundary around it. And lastly, I just need to create a position or rather, I need to define the position of the rectangle based on these x and y coordinates. For this, I'm going to say self.rect.topLeft. And that's just going to take my x and y coordinates. So that's it. That's the pipe class created. Now I need to create a group for it. I'll say pipe underscore group equals pygame.sprite.group. And with that done, I can now add in the update and the draw functions within the main game loop. So I can say, uh, in fact, I'm just going to copy these two lines for the bird group. And then I'll just change bird to pipe. So pipe group draw onto the screen and pipe group update. So that's it. That should be everything working. Uh, of course, I need to create an instance of this pipe. So temporarily, I'll create this up here before my game loop. So I'll say my bottom pipe, I'll just create one for now, is an instance of the pipe class. And the x coordinate is going to be 300 pixels. Y coordinate is going to be the middle of the screen. So I'm just going to copy and paste what I've done for uh, the Flappy Bird. I'll paste that into here. And now I need to remember that once I've created the pipe, I need to add it to the group. So pipe group dot add, and the name of that instance, which is bottom pipe. Now, if I run this code, I should end up with a pipe right there. So that's fine. I've got one of them working. Now I want to add a second one that comes from the top down. So I could have another image, which is going to be my top pipe and it'll just be like a mirror of this but i don't actually have to do this pygame has a function for flipping images so i'm going to use that function to allow me to use this exact same image and just flip it to have it coming from the top instead so to make this as simple as i can i will do all of that within the pipe class and i will just add an extra argument here this argument is going to be called position and in here before i assign a rectangle position for it i'm just going to add a comment to explain what the position means so position one is from the top, minus one is from the bottom. So just by setting this variable to either one or minus one, I can determine which way the pipe is going to be. So I can just say that if position is one, that means that the pipe, as I've already said here, is coming down from the top. So I need to take that existing image that I've just loaded and I need to flip it. So that means that my new self image is going to be a flipped version. For this, I use pygame.transform.flip. And then I take the image that I want to flip, which is the original image, and then I specify which axis I want to flip around. So it's not the x axis, it's the y axis. That's what these two booleans refer to. So with that flipped over, I need to give it a rectangular position. So instead of top left, which I use for the bottom pipe, I'm going to say bottom left. So self.rect bottom left is x and y. So now, if position is negative 1, well, that means that the pipe is coming from the bottom, so I don't need to flip anything. I just need to use this position that I defined previously. So I need to make sure that I change that within this bottom pipe. At the moment, it just takes an x and a y argument. I need to add in a negative 1. And now I can create a top pipe. So top pipe is exactly the same, but it's going to be a positive 1. With that created, I need to make sure that I add it to the group. Otherwise, it's just going to be an instance and it's not going to be shown anywhere. 
So let's run this code now. And there we go. Now I've got these two pipes. This is just a flip version of this bottom pipe. Uh, at the moment, there's no gap for them because of the way I've shown them. But that's something I'm just going to add in right now. So I could add this gap simply by playing around with these Y coordinates here. So saying that the top pipe needs to start high, higher up and the bottom pipe needs to be lower down. But there's an easy way of doing this, and I suppose a cleaner way is just by adding a new variable to my game variables. This is going to be called pipe gap. And I'll set this to 150 pixels to start with. So essentially what I want to do is I want to take that pipe gap and that's the difference between or the distance between the two pipes and then I split it into two so each pipe is offset by that amount. So where at the moment I'm drawing for example the top pipe for the y coordinate I just want to move it up by half of that gap distance. So let's just say minus integer of pipe gap divided by two and then I do the exact same thing for the bottom pipe except I offset it down the way so I whoops I increase, uh, I add a plus. So let's run this code now. And there you go. I've got this little gap of 150 pixels between the two pipes. At the moment, though, the pipes aren't doing anything. They're just sitting there. They're not moving across. So to do that, I just need to handle that within my uh, update function. So I'll define update now. And all I need to say really is that I want the pipes to be moving left. So that just means that I need to reduce the x coordinate of it every iteration. So self.rec.x needs to be reduced by a certain amount. Well, if we come back up to the game variables, I've already defined a scroll speed for the game. At the moment, this is only being used by the ground, but that is the overall scroll speed. I want everything to move at the same rate. So I can just put this in here as well. Scroll underscore speed. So if I run this now, see the pipes are moving across. And that's fine, pipes have gone, but now there's no more being created. So in reality, this is fine, but that's only going to be a manual creation of the pipes. I want them to be created constantly within the game loop. So to do that, I need to add a little timer. I'll come back up into my main game variables, and I'll define a couple of extra variables. The first one is pipe frequency. So how often do I want these pipes appearing? Because I'm using a timer, I'm going to set a certain amount of time. And this is going to be in milliseconds. So I'll say 1,500, which is one and a half seconds. I'll add a comment to say milliseconds. And the other thing I need to be able to do is check when the last pipe was created and compare it to the current time. So that means that I need to measure the time uh, when the last pipe was created. So when the game starts, there are no pipes. So last pipe is just whenever the game is first initialized. So we say pygame.time.get underscore ticks. So that just takes a measure of the time as soon as the game has started. Now, using these two variables, I can see how long has passed and I can start generating more and more pipes. And I will do that within the main game loop. So I only want them to be created when the game is running. So where I've got this game over is false check. That means that the game is running. So this is where I'm going to create the extra pipes. So first of all, we have to take, well, actually I'll add a comment first just to separate this out. So generate new pipes. So first I need to measure the time right now. So that's the only way I'm going to know how much time has passed is by knowing what the current time is. Uh, the function for this is exactly the same as I did used above. So pygame.time.getTicks. This is going to take the current time, and now I can say that if time now minus the last pipe, so the time when the last pipe was generated, if that exceeds the pipe frequency, then that means that enough time has passed since the last pipes, and that means that I can now create my extra pipes. So where I've got them added in manually at the moment, I can delete this from here and copy this into here instead. Let's just indent that. There you go. So as soon as this condition is met, that means that I'm free to create an extra set of pipes. So my bottom pipe is going to be created, top pipe is going to be created. But uh, I picked 300 pixels arbitrarily initially. What I actually want to happen is I want the pipes to be created just off the screen and then to start scrolling in the way. So for them to be just off the screen, I just use the width of the screen. So I just use screen width. That's the X coordinate where the pipes will be created first of all. So as soon as they're created, They'll be off-site, but then they'll slowly scroll in the way. So that should be fine. That's going to create my pipes, add them to the group. So exactly what I had before, but now it's going to be automated. But of course, once I've done this, I need to remember that this last pipe variable has to change. So the last time the pipe was created is right now. Therefore, last pipe is the current time is time now. So let's run this again and wait one and a half seconds. And there we go. The pipes start coming in and it's all working well. However, I don't want to have to wait one and a half seconds for them to actually start. 
So I kind of want to take that away from the last pipe variable. So if I just add here minus pipe frequency, it's going to mean that as soon as the game starts, this condition is going to be met and straight away we're going to start creating pipes. So let's run that again. There you go. It just comes straight away. And then after that, it's one and a half seconds each time. But you notice the game hasn't started. The bird isn't even flapping. Uh, well, it's flapping, but it's not flying. And the reason for that is because I had this additional event handler in here in my game loop that said that when I click the mouse button, then we set the flying variable to true. And only then does the bird start moving up and down. So I don't really want pipes to be generated until that's happened. Well, here where I've currently got my game over check for generating the pipes, I can also add and flying equals true. So if the game is running and I've clicked the mouse button to actually start the, this round, start flying, well, then we can start generating pipes. And this has the convenient addition that it's also going to capture my drawing and scrolling of the ground. So if I run this, you notice nothing's happening yet. And as soon as I click, everything starts moving. So that's a little bit more, uh, more correct now. The next problem to tackle, though, is that these pipes, they're all being generated in the exact same position. There's no randomness in it. They're all just 150 pixels between. So each one of them is 75 pixels up and 75 pixels down. So let's address that just now. And uh, to do that, I'm going to add in a uh, random. So to add in random variables, I need to import the random uh, library. So I just come up here and just say import random. So now that I've imported this, I can use that random uh, library to create random numbers for me. So if I come back into here where I've generated these pipes, well, soon, just before I actually create one, let's create a pipe height variable. So this pipe height is going to be a random value. So I call random, which is the library, and I call the rand int function from it. So this just takes two numbers and it's going to create a random integer between them. So the numbers I want are minus 100 and plus 100. So within that range, it's going to create, uh, it's going to pick a random number. So now that I've got this random number, I can add this to the y coordinate of both of these pipes. So let's come in here and say plus pipe height and plus pipe height. So this is on both of the y coordinates for the two pipes. So it means that they could be anywhere between minus 100 pixels and plus 100 pixels on the y coordinate. So either 100 pixels up or 100 pixels down. So let's run this game again and start the game. So they should be, and there we go. Yeah, they're, although they seem to be kind of following a similar pattern, but it's just because it's random. So they could be a lot further, a lot uh, lower down. Now, a couple of small things just to finish this off. Where I've got my pipe class being updated, the pipes are just moving off the screen. But what happens once they go off the screen is that they just keep moving. So even though we can't see them anymore, they're still in the game's memory and they're still just being constantly updated. We don't really want that because eventually there's just going to be too many of these pipes in the group. So what I want to do is add in an extra if check within this pipe update function. And all I'm just going to say is that if the right hand side of the pipe rectangle has gone off the screen, therefore, if the X coordinate is less than zero, then we don't need to see that pipe anymore. We don't even need it within the game memory. So then I just say self dot kill and that's going to destroy that pipe. It just delete it and that'll be it. But because that only happens once it's gone off the screen, you won't see anything. You won't really notice it but you know that that's what's happening. And I guess I could test that. I could just make this 200. And if I run this again, it should be that when they get to about here, they just disappear. There you go. Pipes just start to disappear. So that's fine. That's working. I can just delete this, make it zero. And the final thing to add is to actually add some collision. At the moment, I can just fly through those pipes and nothing really happens. So I currently have a little bit of collision here where I say that check if the bird has hit the ground. Uh, actually, this should be greater than or equal to. Uh, so when the bird hits the ground, everything stops. Well, I can add the same thing for when the bird hits one of the pipes. And this is super easy. Because I'm using uh, sprites and sprite groups, this is a really easy check. So I'll just add a comment to say, look for collision. And uh, it really is just one if statement. So if pygame.sprite.group collide. So this is the function that I need. Essentially, it's just going to look for collision between the two groups. So the first group is the bird group. So that's the flappy bird itself. And the second group is the pipe group. So this is just going to, rather than me having to iterate through each of the pipes and compare them against the bird and see has it collided with that particular pipe, by just having this one function, I can check whether anything within the bird group, which at the moment is actually just the one bird, has collided with anything within the pipe group. Now, there's a couple of extra 
uh, Boolean arguments here that I need to add in. Both of these are going to be false, and these are do kill arguments. So this has some extra functionality that if I do get a collision, I could, for example, if I was using this is a different game where uh, I had bullets shooting at targets, then by setting one of these to true, I would delete whatever object is, is collided. So by setting this to true, the bird would be deleted. And by setting this to true, my second group, which is my pipe group, would be deleted. So anytime I hit one of the pipes, it would be deleted from here if this was true. So obviously I'm going to set it to false. Uh, the other variable, or rather the other check I want to do is I want to make sure that the bird can't go off the top of the screen because I don't have any collision once it goes off that height. So I just need to make sure that it can't do that. So flappy, which is the instance rather than the group, I'm just looking at that particular instance. If the rect.top has gone less than zero, so if the y position of the flappy bird has gone off the screen, then in both of these conditions, it's game over. So we just set game over to true. I don't want to set flying to uh, false just yet because I want the bird to kind of keep flying and keep flopping down. I don't want to just hit one of these pipes and just stop in midair and the game stops. So if I run this code now and I'll hit one of these pipes. Oops, <laughs> missed something. Ah, uh, well, one thing that I missed is that I'm updating the pipe group all the time. So when the game ends, uh, I don't actually want these pipe groups to continue moving to the left. I want them to stop as well. So let's delete that from here and make sure that it's only kept in within this generate new pipes, draw and scroll the ground, and also update pipes. So we put that in here as well. So it's only going to happen when the game is running. So let's rerun that. And if I hit one of the pipes now, there we go, game ends. So it hits the pipe. But it doesn't just stop in midair, it, it kind of it continues flying and the flying code just moves it down the way under gravity. So it doesn't move right anymore because nothing is scrolling. It just falls all the way down and that's it. Game over. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, the game does still need a little bit more polishing, but I'm going to come to that in a future tutorial. So if you find this useful, then please do leave a like. And if you'd like to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.